Welcome back to another Animal of the Week. In today's video we're taking advantage of good old clickbait by looking at penis worms, or their official name Priya pulida. Priya pulida is actually an entire phylum of worms that resemble penises, but it's actually a rather small phylum with only 22 known species of penis worm, some living but others extinct from millions of years ago. However, some modern scientists have classed this phylum as simply a class within a different phylum, Cephalohorincha, as they sought to merge three rather small phylums, Kinorincha, Purapulida, and Lorisifera together, as they all share some of the same basic characteristics. Now it's time for a little history lesson in classical Greek and Roman gods. Priapus is the Greek god of various things like gardens, bees, protector of livestock, vineyards, and a few other things, but most famously he was the god of male fertility. As he was originally Greek, he was of course appropriated by the Romans a few centuries later, and filled the same role. What has all this got to do with Priapulida? Well, Priapus was famously depicted to have a rather large set of male reproductive organs, and so Priapulida was actually named after him due to the resemblance between the penis worm and the Greek god. The 22 members of Priapulida are benthic in nature, meaning they live on the sea floor. As there are 22 different currently known species, they all live around the world from tropical to polar seas, and shallow coastline neuritic zones to thousands of metres down in the abyssopelagic zones of the ocean. Because they can potentially live at such depths, it's most likely that we have not discovered all the species of Priapulida, and perhaps we never will, as there could very well be hundreds more of them lurking in the sands of the deep unexplored ocean. The reason that some of these species can only survive in shallow coastline, but others can survive in desolate barren wastes of the abyssopelagic seafloor, all comes down to diet. Different species have different feeding habits. Some species rely on eating other smaller worms in the sand that they dig out to find. Other species, however, are thought to be detritivores, and so are able to live in deep ocean away from most other life. Fossil records of some of the older, now extinct species, such as the genus Otia from the Cambrian period over 500 million years ago, that were found fossilized in the Burgess Shale in British Columbia, show that some of these worms had the ability to extend a proboscis out of its top end in search of prey, suggesting that this Priapulida used to bury itself in the sand and hunt from the safety of cover using this proboscis. The fossil contents of its guts also show perhaps that they were cannibals, eating others of its own genus and species, which has also been seen in its currently living relatives. Reproduction is fairly simple. Unlike some worm species, these are not hermaphrodites, and there are male and females. Usually there is only one ovary or testes per individual, and they will release eggs and sperm into the water around them, hoping that the sperm and egg will somehow meet up. If they do get fertilised, eggs will hatch in around 20 days but this varies between species. If you are wondering how it's possible for the sperm and eggs to meet up in the vast ocean, they usually live near each other, and they release vast amounts of sperm and eggs. In Alaska, it was recorded that in a single bay, there were 85 individuals of the species Cadatus per metre squared, and 58,000 larvae per metre squared. The hatched larvae will quickly form a protective chitin cuticle to give it some form of basic protection in the sea. The species all differ slightly, but one consistent feature is a chitin cuticle. A cuticle is essentially a hard but flexible covering around the animal that protects the softer tissues inside. As the worm grows, it will molt its cuticle. You may be wondering how a soft body animal such as these worms could be fossilised so well if they are soft tissue. The reason is that because they are benthic animals, they are very susceptible to being very suddenly and quickly covered in sediment from underwater landslides or other mass movements of sediment. This quick covering will create an anoxic environment perfect for creating lagostatin deposits. Lagostatin just means a sedimentary deposit that exhibits extraordinary preservation, sometimes even preserving soft tissue. The main body of Priapulida is made up of two segments. 
the introvert and the trunk. The trunk is the main part of the body that contains the basic nervous system, digestive system, and reproductive system, but interestingly there is no respiratory system. Instead the worm's muscle cells contain the protein myohemerythrin. This protein binds to another protein found within the body of the worm called hemerythrin that binds to O2 molecules and transports them directly to the myohemerythrin in the muscles, cutting out any need for gas exchange through diffusion in the alveoli of the lungs, like humans and many other animals, saving the worm a lot of internal space as they don't need lungs. The introvert is called the introvert as it is the head that can be introverted into the trunk. As a soft-bodied, relatively small worm, these things get preyed upon by anything that wants to eat it, really. It has little protection other than its chiting cuticle, but an otter or seal with sharp enough teeth could easily bite through. It therefore relies almost solely upon hiding in the sand as a defence, and even this doesn't always work, because it will end up being preyed upon by other members of their own species. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learnt something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.